Um, now on to uh, this evening's uh, special presentation. Um, so a little bit uh, about the Spirit of Cosmo Award. Each award is an individually formed work of art, which is displayed here, in the image of an angelic spirit. A blend of abstract imagery with a distinctive feel creates a link between the past and the future. Raised wings depict a joyful expression of triumph over adversity. The unexpected flashes of a color appear to be continuously changing. How fitting is that for Cosmo? We are continuously changing. Now about the person the ward is named in honor of, Howard Stenstrude, best known as Howie. He is one of the founders of this organization and was passionately involved in, uh, on our board right up to the day of his passing. He was not only an inspiration to all of the board and staff, he was a driving force. I am sure not many ever said no to him, and I certainly know the word can't was, was not in his vocabulary. I, I just, he just never said, but he was, there was always a way. How he is missed, but so not forget, forgotten. His name often comes up in conversations. Wonder what Howie would have said. Wonder what Howie would think. Wonder what Howie would have done. He is never far from our thoughts. Our most prestigious award that we hand out each year at this time is our Howard Stansrud Spirit of Cosmo Award. The award is intended to promote the vision and spirit of those who founded Cosmo. It is presented in recognition of people who made a huge difference in lives of adults with intellectual disabilities. We were intending to unveil it at our open house, however, this was interrupted due to the flood. So, plans to officially came to be tonight. We're very proud to have this uh, plaque displayed, which is in front of me, uh, in our administration offices to highlight it, as well as the deserving recipients. This evening, I have the great honor of announcing that the 2016 year's recipient for the Howard Stansrud Spirit of Cosmo is Alan Hunter. Al has contributed towards enhancing the lives for individuals with developmental disabilities for over 32 years by his words, actions, and many contributions. He truly reflects the values and philosophy of the founders of Cosmo and has been critically involved in the evolution of Cosmo Industries as the premier service provider for adults with disabilities. Al followed in the footsteps of his father, Ken Hunter, both into the family business and onto the Cosmo board. Ken was one of the founding members, and Al has kept up that tradition. A year ago, Al retired from the Cosmo board, but remains an honorary board member and continues to provide his, his wise guidance to the board and our leadership team. Al has been very active over the years with his children, his 14 grandchildren, his business, all while volunteering countless hours of his time to Cosmo and the Vipond, Riverside Vipond Golf Classic, which he has chaired since 1992. Plus, he ensures to get in several rounds of golf, as well as down here and down south. He's been a valuable contributor to our organization as a chairperson for several other Cosmo committees, as well as treasurer and president of the board. He also served as president for three years for Cosmo Golf Canada. For 20 years, Al served as chair of the Western Vipon Golf Tournament. Riverside Vipon Golf Classic is one of five exclusive golf and country clubs that hosts this fundraiser. From its humble beginnings, this tournament has become a premier event that's grown in popularity and prestige, with golfers participating from all over Saskatchewan and even some out-of-province teams. Even Hockey Hall of Famer Emil Francis attended one year and golfed. The, uh, the Riverside Vipone Golf Classic has raised thousands of dollars that have enhanced the quality of life for adults with disabilities at Cosmo and at Elmwood. Over the years, funds have been used for projects such as a new gym, cafeteria, a snoozling room, as well as provided the needed funds for the purchase of a wheelchair van and other specialized equipment. Al was truly instrumental in making this event what it is today. I recall my first Vipond about 16 years ago, working alongside Al. At the time, I really don't know if he knew who I was, but I certainly knew who he was. He was an incredible mentor. He provided support, he listened, he provided guidance, and had high expectations. I really appreciate and admire this because I too valued the importance of doing things right with Vipond. Details matter. I remember not getting a last name of someone and he instantly said, what do you mean? You always get the last name. And I do now, however, I don't always remember the last name. <laughs> um, 
Elle now has passed the Vipond reins onto Derek, who in his first year has done an exceptional job, not surprisingly, with Elle's guidance and support, just like he has given to all of us over the years. Elle has been a valuable Cosmo member who's always been available when we needed him. He's been a significant contrib contributor to the success of Cosmo to enhance the lives of those we support. We will now show a small video highlighting some things. I have a second family uh, where, there, where, where there is no, no, no vested interest. The Andersons and the Stensrids should ex be expected to do that, but the Hunters are another case, both Ken and Al. One of the, one of the low points in, in our Cosmo, in the life of handicapped people, and yet one of the high points at the same time for me was when, when uh, Regina, the Department of Social Services decided eight or ten years ago that they were going to shut down all the all of the the conglomerated groups, all of the cosmos at Elmwood, and we went to a group of us went to uh, North Battleford, and when Al Hunter stood up and faced the, the powers that be in Regina and said, "We ain't going to put up with this," and he was so forceful and and that kind of outside influence, the non-family influence, have been so, so very, very important. It is my pleasure to call upon Mike Stensrud, son of the late Howard Stensrud, along with Rita, who's joined us this evening, to present the Howard Stensrud Spirit of Cosmo <clears throat> Award. I talked her into saying a couple of words. And it, it's most, uh, I was very pleased to be here, and, and uh, I have to say that I'm still as proud of Howard today as I was when I lived with him for 63 years. <laughs> and uh, he, he seemed to take on the immediate, and as soon as we heard uh, of Joanne's problems, uh, he, I, I now can consider him like a racehorse who put the bit in his mouth and never stopped. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, I know how, uh, I, I, and I guess how he spoke tonight, so uh, you heard it uh, through with his own voice. But I know how proud how he was and how much he admired Al Hunter because uh, he told me uh, many, many times. And so uh, I, I know he's smiling uh, knowing that Al Hunter is going to win this award uh, in his honor. Yeah, he sure he is. Come on up,
Ken was uh, came to me and he said uh, he was the past president and uh, on the nominating committee at the time and he said you know I, I really think you would enjoy um, being a member of the board at Cosmo he says you'll be working with some great people he says they have a great staff and you'll be working to provide some opportunities for an amazing group of participants. And uh, this was the beginning of one of the most interesting and rewarding endeavors of my life. For two years, I, I pretty much just watched uh, as a board member. Um, all of you know the, the, the scope, the breadth of everything that's going on, uh, the delivery of the programs, the challenges, the manner in which their uh, solutions are arrived at are all very uh, complex and it really takes you uh, quite some time to get kind of a handle on what you think you know is happening. Some of my favorite memories uh, were at, at dinner or after a dinner like this or uh, after some of our board meetings. Uh, Howie, and Grant, Eric, uh, sometimes Al Anderson, who was also a founding member. Uh, he was never far from the program. One or the other would kind of take over and start talking, reminiscing about some events, challenges that have happened in the past. Uh, they were enthralling. These guys were giants. They, they offered so much. They had so much uh, interest in this program and so such a wealth of experience that it was just amazing to listen to them so they were able to give me a part of the 20 years of history of Cosmo that, that I had missed. Those were just really great evenings and I, I don't know how you recreate create that. But one guy would start talking and then another would twig something else and it should happen more often. It should happen with staff and with our managers because uh, there's just so much good stuff back there and uh, we really don't want to lose it. I'd like to think back to some of our great contracts that we used to be involved in and I, I, I see that, uh, that we're still doing a little bit of, it's not called mail prep anymore, but we're doing those kinds of things. Uh, you know, the printing, the folding, the stuffing, the labeling. Uh, for the most part, I think those opportunities are gone from us, but that used to be kind of a really significant contract. We had the potting soil. Does anybody remember potting soil? <laughs> oh, this was really a lot of fun. We had the raw material and the vermiculite, and uh, then we discovered, well, we've, we've got to sterilize the soil. And uh, we had a brilliant man named uh, Len Housen, who was a mechanical genius and uh, good with machines and conveyors and bailers and all those kinds of things. And, and uh, we found a way to bring this stuff in, sterilize it, package it. Then um, we had to market it. We had to get this stuff to the stores and uh, we had to try and get into the, uh, the big market stores. And, uh, this was a really challenging thing and we, we ended up, we, we kind of failed uh, for a couple of reasons. It was just about impossible to get into the big box. Uh, we were competing with some really powerful people that were in the potting soil business and it also wasn't really clean work, right? It, you know, it wasn't perfect for our setting. So, so we had to say goodbye to that one, but it was a really good experience to to see so many people pull together to, to try and put that together. And we, we had a pretty good product that it could have worked. We wash pots today. I think we're still doing those kinds of things. Uh, when I arrived, we were wedding, wedding uh, their decorations were still a hot item, <coughs> making the flowers and stuff like that. And we made uh, name tags that would be appropriate for conferences and conventions, things like that. Who remembers the uh, packaging days where we had the templates where the participants would put the nuts and bolts in the different 
sprayers and, uh, of course, the washers, and then bag them up. Uh, we used to, uh, for Joe Young at El Rancho, we used to put the knife, fork, uh, the napkin, and the salt and pepper together kind of thing. And uh, one of our other little uh, endeavors, of course, was, was the golf contract, and that was really quite an exciting time. And Al Anderson was involved in this one, too. Uh, he, he's the one that introduced us to the Ben Sayers group, who were a manufacturer in Great Britain. And they were going to produce the components and send, ship them over, and Cosmo was going to assemble. Well, the ingenuity of the, the staff and the board saw the opportunity, and this, this whole project really developed into something that we were all pretty proud of. Like, our participants loved to be associated with, with Cosmo Golf. Uh, we'll never forget uh, the year uh, we assembled 300,000 clubs. We were the largest manufacturer in Canada. So once again, it was Howie and Eric and Grant, Lydia and Amy, uh, Terry Hashimoto, Rick Harris, uh, it was really quite a good time. We lost out in that one uh, simply because uh, China was able to ship completed, boxed, packaged goods with bags embroidered and, and uh, everything, all the paraphernalia that went with it, would arrive at our door for virtually our cost. And that just was the end. So it was kind of too bad, but. What a wonderful time we had during all those times, and, and uh, it was really something. Um, <clears throat> Vibond um, was, was also another real pleasure. Uh, I, I think it was Mary Baxter who put it on to Al Anderson and, uh, and uh, Howie, that, that something was happening out there for people with special needs that the golf tournaments were being run in a few clubs. And of course, these two guys got on that thing right away. Made the connection, and uh, in 1984, we started the bike launch. And that's just been a wonderful thing. Uh, we are forever indebted to Riverside Country Club, who give up their golf course. Their members not only give up the course, but they pay dearly and support us very well in the event. And uh, it has allowed us to do many great things with the proceeds. Some of the uh, directors that I had the pleasure of working with, uh, uh, I look back on people like Lens Lenhausen, who was with us for more than 30 years. I really enjoyed Helen McMillan, who only we were only on the board together for maybe a couple of years. She'd been on the board for 20 years, but. She was a remarkable director. I remember Bill Canigan uh, in his quiet way would uh, share his wisdom. And of course, Mary Baxter and Dick for all the great input that you had over all those years. Butch Williams, Jim McKinney, Betty Ann Fisher, Jamie Lurkey, Dwayne Schmott, Sandra Downs, Louis Anderson, our friend uh, Greg Coops, and uh, weren't we fortunate to have Ken Hominer with uh, all of his business and recycling experience during our board. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed working with Mike, like his father, a strong supporter. His knowledge, commitment, and courage have made him just a, a great defender. We will never have a stronger advocate for Cosmo. I also enjoyed working with Jim Gillies. He was more than 25 years on the board. Other guys that I consider not just directors and associates, but friends, Craig Newby, Kirk Anderson, um, Gary Nickel, Amy Kleipak, of course, Brent Rempel was doing just a remarkable job in 
in his term. And uh, congratulations to you uh, on a really remarkable two years. It's been just, just amazing. I, I think you've just done a wonderful job. Well, it's, it's not too often that we really get an opportunity to recognize our, our staff, our management. And uh, I'm glad to see it happen very nicely here tonight, Charlene, and, and of course, uh, with uh, the follow-up from Brent. But um, CAFE always referred to the miracle on 34th Street. And well, in my mind, that uh, miracle is the staff that we were able to attract. I mean, how is it possible that you find this kind of dedication and talent and commitment and have them stay it's, it's a mystery to me. And it, it's just a, a remarkable thing. Uh, I know that the biggest factor behind the success and the growth of Cosmo Industries has been the management staff. The, uh, of course, as, as demonstrated tonight in the video, it was uh, typical of the reaction of our staff to see how they handled this, this flood. I mean, it, it was just paid out it and make it happen. And it's just absolutely remarkable. Uh, CAFE, I'd like to say a few things about K because back in 95, uh, I remember that the, the demand for space at Cosmo was uh, Growing, it was substantial. We uh, we recycling, was subsidizing the whole building, and then suddenly we were confronted with uh, the realization that our carrier, supposed partner, was putting blue bins beside our green bins because he realized the uh, lucrative aspect of paper. And of course the citizens of Saskatoon didn't know any better. They, they'd been trained to recycle. They thought they were doing their thing and how could they distinguish? So Kay was all over the city uh, counting bins, recording those, and uh, trying to build a case to release us from the contract with our hauler. Uh, because our contract was three away through the city because they, they needed to control that. And uh, we decided it really needed to be dissolved because of the conflict of interest. Not long after that, it was probably a year or so, when we were receiving less product and the paper prices also dropped dramatically. And we were faced with some of our, our darkest times. It was, uh, it was very difficult. We moved into an austerity program and uh, it was Kay's role to inform management and staff that there would be some cutbacks and we would not be able to compensate them in the manner they deserved. Um, things got better in the year or two following, quite a bit better. And as I look back, we will always remember that things were really fine under Kay's watch. But I know she was always scarred by what she had to do in those really difficult times. Peter Gerard is a, another guy that salt of the earth, a guy that I really enjoy working with. He came to us uh, because of his accounting background, but we found out really quickly that, that his compassion and his ability to communicate were also very important. And uh, he was instrumental in opening some doors with the administration of the city of Saskatoon and, and with the community living division because they could see the sincerity and uh, the hard work that he was going going through. So, so I, I, I really want to thank Peter. Joanne Cornier um, has worked in every corner of the building. Uh, she was manager of uh, golf at uh, Cosmo Golf uh, at a time, and I, I will always remember her working those 16-hour days and in an effort to package our shipments so that we could get the product to our, our, our golf customers. Uh, 
She, she did whatever was required, whenever required, and she did it really well. And I, I want to recognize Joanne. And Denise Young, um, our program director, and, and uh, so on the ball, so, so in touch with what's going on in the building. If there's a problem, she knows about it. She has probably got the solution, and, uh, and uh, I don't think we will ever find a better program director. I remember working well with, uh, with Carrie and Teresa and Randine, and uh, for all of your professional input and skills, it was very gratifying. I want to thank Daryl for quietly looking after us. And uh, Lesha, I uh, wish you well. It's been a wonderful time. You've done a great job for us, and I, I really hope you enjoy your retirement. The positive attitude at uh, Cosmo uh, strikes you the minute you run it, walk in the front door. And uh, it was always a pleasure to be greeted by Char, or Judy, or uh, Toby. Um, it, it, they always took time to talk for a moment out of their busy schedule, whatever they were doing, they'd drop it and uh, welcome you to the to Cosmo. And Linda Davies, I want to recognize her fine work in the, in the Vipon. She, I know that she does many other things in the building, but she really did a marvelous job on the Vipon. And my friend Ken Grischuk, who I influenced his, his being involved in this operation back a few years, and uh, he wears so many hats, but uh, and he handles it well. So thank you, Ken, for all the things that you do for Cosmo. And one other person that I have always been impressed with, uh, she's organized and dedicated and always calm. And, uh, I think she's doing a magnificent job, and thank you, Shirley. And uh, Howie really was the spirit of Cosmo. Uh, he led us, he uh, challenged us, he showed us how to dream, and he inspired us all. It is a tremendous honor to be, even be considered for this award. And so, Rita, I want to thank you, and uh, Mike and Rhonda, and the Stensard family, and all of you for allowing me to be part of this great program. It's been a real privilege. Thank you.